Hi all, I'm Kevin Varga, a PhD student at UCSB in the Geography Department and the treasurer of the Santa Barbara County Fire Safe Council. Today, I'm going to talk to you about some of my research titled Megafires in a Warming World. What wildfire risk factors led to California's largest recorded wildfire? Everyone in California knows that fire activity has been increasing. And sadly, a big part of that is due to us. Climate change is causing a hotter, drier atmosphere, which is drying fuels out, allowing them to burn faster and more intense. Climate change is also contributing to our current mega drought. Our forests are becoming denser due to this mentality that we have to fight fires, and some due to commercial logging. Denser forests is, is evident in this before and after picture of Yosemite Valley. In order to better understand this, I analyzed the initial explosive growth of the August complex, California's largest recorded wildfire event. It ignited during a dry lightning storm in August of 2020, during an ongoing heat wave and drought, it burned over a million acres, cost over $115 million and a firefighter's life. I used a fire spread model to simulate the first four days of explosive growth of the Doe Fire, the largest individual fire contributing to the August complex. You can see the observed perimeter in the figure here in black and my modeled perimeter in red. I wanted to use this fire spread model to answer some questions like what meteorological and fuel conditions contributed the most to the fire's growth and how the Doe Fire have evolved if the ignition had occurred during a second stronger heat wave in September 2020. Within the control model, the main fuels were shrubs, represented by SH here in this figure, as well as timber, represented by TL and TU. These fire spread models allow us to temporally and spatially analyze the rate of spread, or ROS, as well as the total fuel consumption, or TFC. When looking at different factors that contributed to the rate of spread in a principal component analysis, I realized that hot and dry daytime temperatures were the main contributors. There were some gusty southerly winds during the day, but this fire was mostly driven by hot, dry conditions, causing sometimes over 4,000 acres of growth per hour. After completing the control simulation, I did some experiments with the model, plugging in historical climate values or perturbing the temperature. The greatest results occurred whenever I set the fuel moisture content to historical 90th percentile values. This caused an 18% greater growth. Whenever I set the ignition to August 5th, which was before the ongoing heat wave, the fire grew less than 50%, more, less than 50 of its observed growth. And when I set the ignition to September 6th, a hotter heat wave, fire grew more than 50% greater. This shows that extreme events like heat waves and droughts, which are becoming more likely in cl with climate change, can contribute to really extreme fire behavior. When looking at the amount of heat that the fire released, some of the same results occurred. Drier fuels, hotter, drier atmosphere cause greater heat release, which accelerates the combustion process. Hotter, drier conditions into the night are also causing increased fire behavior at night when firefighters typically can do more containment or get some well-needed rest. This does not bode well for our hotter, drier future. Thank you all for listening. I want to end with a picture of myself when I was a wildland firefighter and direct any questions to my email, kvarga at ucsb.edu.